Hey, good evening. It's Dr. Soloway. I'm a little nasally congested, allergic to chlorine, and had a long swim this morning. But um, here I am in my um, x-ray department filming tonight's video. And uh, as you can see, I'm weary and uh, exhausted and so on. Um, so today we have to talk about scleroderma. I had a great guy in today uh, who was here about a year and a half ago. And the salient features of his case from a year and a half ago uh, the one that comes to mind is that when I examined him, he had abnormal nail fold capillary beds, which means he had dilated capillary loops, he had dropout of capillary loops. And as far as I was concerned at that time, I really felt that he had scleroderma or myositis. Very difficult, unless you have extreme expertise, at distinguishing myositis lupus and scleroderma on nail fold capillary exam. Some of us can do it, but I, I honestly, um, with as much expertise in this field as I have um, in the nail fold capillary bed analysis, including my database um, of saved studies in the computer, I could not tell whether this guy had myositis or um, scleroderma. So anyway, um, something happened. I think he lost his insurance, and he came back today. Symptoms were quite similar to what they were. Um, for the most part, uh, hmm, cat's got my tongue. Anyway, long story short, I believe he must have had joint pain. Um, and his centromere antibody was 1 to 1280. So 1 to 1280, um, I'm going to try and explain everything as I go. So 1280 means that Essentially, his blood was dropped on something, and it was diluted six times and remained concentrated enough to give the same flavor, if you will, of the blood. So imagine diluting red paint with white paint six times, yet the red paint is still red because... It was so concentrated. So it's six dilutions. We call that 1,280. And when that is seen in a centromere pattern, this is almost diagnostic of a minimum of a form frust, or what we call a partial syndrome of limited scleroderma. So at this point, the question becomes, does he have just limited scleroderma, or does he have an overlap syndrome? So, first, we'll talk a little bit, what, what is scleroderma? Scleroderma is an interesting disease because unlike the other inflammatory diseases, scleroderma has an inflammatory component as well as a fibrotic component. In the fibrotic component, collagen is laid down and then it hardens, similar to paraffin wax, where it's, it's liquid, wet, and runny, and then it becomes hard. But once something becomes fibrotic, it is deemed untreatable or dead at that point, for the most part. We don't have any bona fide anti-fibrotic drug. So when something is inflamed, which is the other component of scleroderma, that inflammation has to be treated fast and heavy and hard, um, particularly when it comes to the lungs. So I'm going to change gears for a second. So I got to tell you that scleroderma is a condition that has fibrosis as well as inflammation. Now, those areas that can be involved would be the skin, hence the term sclerodactyly or progressive sclerosis of the skin, the esophagus, which gives trouble swallowing, particularly solid foods, the muscles, which can give muscle weakness and mimic or overlap with myopathy or inflammatory myositis, um, um, the blood vessels, uh, the capillaries can become dilated and they can become lost or destroyed. 
excuse me. Um, so basically we have a situation where a person can present with irregularities in the small blood vessels of the fingernail beds. This can lead to Raynaud's phenomena, which is typically defined as anywhere from five to 60 minutes of a typical triple phase color response. If somebody does have the typical triple phase color response or Raynaud's, particularly in the setting of abnormal nail fold capillary bed analysis with dilatation of loops and dropout of loops, that person more than likely does have scleroderma. Um, many other features. Um, I want to change topics again. So we have localized scleroderma, scleroderma, we call that morphia, looks like patches of wax paper on your skin, typically uh, can be diagnosed clinically and um, biopsy of the skin, um, can be treated with methotrexate, does not have systemic involvement, does not have antibodies. Linear scleroderma is when there is um, typically a limb or in children sometimes the face, the term encudesa. Um, there's hemiatrophy of the face, there's loss of the musculature, the skin, the fascia, the fat layer. Um, these people are left with um, significant deformities and atrophy of limbs. Not good treatments here. Then we have the systemic varieties of scleroderma, one of which used to be called Crest Syndrome, which is now known as Limited Scleroderma. Um, there, is, um, there is still some utility to the word Crest, and the word Crest stands for C, for calcinosis, which generally means there are calcium deposits found on x-ray. Um, and in my patient this morning, we did x-rays of his knees and elbows because he appeared to have nodules, but it turns out there are no calcifications. So that's a nice thing. We don't have to worry about these things weeping out of the skin, becoming infected or itching or causing erosion of the bone. But anyway, the C is for calcinosis. The R is for Raynaud's phenomena, which I described before. The E is for esophageal dysmotility or muscle weakness and trouble swallowing solid foods. Um, S is for sclerodactyly. Uh, dactyly uh, refers to the digit, and sclero means thickening or hardening of the skin. So... Uh, T is telangiectasia, which is a dilated blood vessel, often seen on the fingertips or um, in the lip or there. Uh, I don't have any to show you. Um, so that, along with a centromere antibody of 1280 or greater, would give you a diagnosis of limited scleroderma. Now, the most ominous finding in linear, I'm sorry, in limited scleroderma these days, um, pulmonary hypertension, which is treatable. And if you have a centromere antibody, uh, it's more likely that you're at risk of pulmonary artery hypertension. Um, we used to have, um, in both limited and systemic sclerosis. We used to deal with the scleroderma renal crisis. You can actually have a um, hypertensive scleroderma crisis, or you can have a non-hypertensive scleroderma renal crisis treated with ACE inhibitors, doses as high as you need to go, eight and 10 times the package insert dose, life-saving, kidney-saving. Now, that'll be my prelude into systemic sclerosis, which is more often associated with the topoisomerase or the SCL70 antibody. And by the way, the centromere antibody can be seen in systemic sclerosis and the topoisomerase can be seen in limited scleroderma. 
and another antibody, the RNA polymerase 3, which is associated with malignancy or with scleroderma renal crisis, um, is more likely to be in, be in PSS or progressive systemic sclerosis or what I'm going to now refer to as scleroderma. So the most ominous finding in scleroderma is interstitial lung disease. So interstitial lung disease, uh, once we have fibrosis, is untreatable and patients will need heart and lung transplants. However, when the patient presents with shortness of breath, they have their pulmonary function test, they have a decreased um, diffusion capacity for carbon monoxide, and they have interstitial changes on their uh, CAT scan. Those patients um, need to be treated immediately and aggressively with cyclophosphamide. Um, they often do respond. However, the outcomes are still not perfect. They're better than zero, but not really great. Uh, the renal crisis is now something that can be dealt with. Um, trouble swallowing and weight loss is a problem. Uh, fibrosis of the thyroid is a problem. Testicular dysfunction is a problem. Um, pretty much whatever you can think of can become a problem. Um, hmm. Let's see, what else? Um, the other thing I wanted to say about scleroderma, in particular as it pertained to the patient today, the patient today had what looked like Gotrin's lesions on his hands, and I couldn't tell whether or not he had Gotrin's lesions. I'm going to move because the cleaning people are in the background. So we're going to walk into my x-ray department here, and you'll, you'll see me with the x-ray machine in the background. So, there we go. Um, so the patient either had Gotrin's lesions or the patient had um, mechanic's hand. And frankly, I couldn't be 100% certain which it was. They were over the knuckles. They were scaly. Uh, he had them over other bony prominences, and I suspect they probably are Gotrin's lesions. I say this because his anti jo one antibody was negative. However, because he went to the incorrect lab, not his fault, all the other synthetase antibodies were not done. Um, he was screened. Um, his MI2 antibody was negative, which is a dermatomyositis antibody. His MDA5 antibody um, was ordered. I was looking for amyopathic dermatomyositis um, because I did think he had Gotrin's lesions. So I don't want to get um, uh, in too many directions here. The point I'm trying to make is that scleroderma um, in the crest or limited form or the PSS or the uh, systemic sclerosis form can be seen overlapping with muscle weakness or um, myositis or myopathy, inflamed muscle, weak muscle. So uh, this patient uh, does not have that, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, my friend the patient, I believe you had normal EMG and nerve conduction other than incidental bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, um, but no muscle involvement whatsoever. Um, any other questions you need to know about scleroderma, I'm happy to address them. I apologize for being disorganized and tired. It's uh, becoming part of my life. But again, I think I can be a great resource of information. I did, um, I did cover everything I wanted to cover, though. Um, have a great night, and I look forward to your questions. Bye.